Hi everyone, this is Matt from Open Builds. In this instructional video, we're going to show you how to wire up your mini mill. So we've utilized lightweight applications like our corrugated tubing here for the Z-axis as well as the Y. We've also incorporated the extension limit switches as well as the black box motion control system, which is a powerhouse amongst controllers in its class. As you can see, the machine is running flawlessly right now. And that's right, we're going to be running some G-code at the end of this video. So make sure to follow along with the steps and let's go ahead and get started on this build. So on this first step, we're going to go ahead and gather our wire. What we have here is four conductor wire times three, and each one of these wires is at three feet. So we need to go ahead and get that wire prepped and ready to go. And we're going to go ahead and move to the connection to our motor extension connectors. So on the motors, you will see two of the extension connectors, one female and one male. And essentially these just unplug and plug back in. And it's part of the extension ecosystem. It's just really easy and it's a plug and play type system. And what's really easy about this is all we're doing is coordinating the colors to each one. So you have your four conductor wire, each one's at three feet. So all the motors are gonna have the same length wire. Basically all we're gonna do is just go ahead and correspond each color to each wire. So on this four conductor wire, you will see that we have the same colors, red, blue, green, and yellow. So coming over here to the connector, what we're gonna do is loosen these pins right on top of the connector and insert the wire in the order that we see here. So let's go ahead and get started. So here on the extension connector, I wanna go ahead and give you an example of what I mean by loosening the pins on top. These little metal inserts at the bottom of the connector need to be completely loosened to accept the wire. So once you tighten down those pins on top, it's going to clamp the wire into place and you're going to have a solid connection. So it's very important to loosen those pins before you ever connect the wires. You'll have situations where you can insert the wire and sometimes it'll stay, giving you the illusion that your wires are connected, but they're not. So just make sure to loosen those pins and then insert the wire and tighten the system back down. So taking our four conductor wire, I'm going to work my way right to left, red, blue, green, and yellow, just matching up the colors here. Inserting the wires fully, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down these pens. Okay, what I like to do is just give these wires a tug, make sure that they're fully inserted, and that looks good, it's a solid connection there. So this was our X-axis motor right on the XY table of the mini mill. So let's go ahead and move on to our next motor. So you can see that I have my mini mill turned. If you don't have the mini mill turned, I'll just go ahead and turn it real quick. Just gives you access to each one of the motors. And next I'm gonna go ahead and move to the Y axis motor. So right here, and let's go ahead and connect our four conductor wire to that motor. Okay, so coming to the Y axis motor, once again, we're gonna loosen all of our pins on the connector that's attached to the motor. Looking at the wire colors here, we're just gonna go ahead and match those colors once again, it's that easy. So taking the four conductor wire, I'm gonna go ahead and work right to left once again, red, blue, green, and yellow. And let's go ahead and tighten down those pins. Give those a tug, and that looks good. So let's go ahead and move on to our next motor. Okay, so our last motor that we're gonna go ahead and establish a connection to is our Z-axis motor. So it's right on top of the mini mill. So again, let's go ahead and start by loosening all of our pins. Then taking your four conductor wire, so again, just matching up those colors and working your way from right to left, red, blue, green, and yellow. Once you have those wires inserted, just tighten down those pins. And give those wires a tug, make sure that they're fully inserted. And that's a good solid connection. So now that we have that motor complete, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and connect our micro limit switches to our system. So what I have here is all the parts that we'll need for this step. So let's go ahead and go over those parts now. So what I have here is three three conductor wires at three feet and one two conductor wire at three feet. In addition to that, we have two M5 six millimeter screws that come with the LED light ring. So these will be used to mount the LED light ring to the router spindle mount. You'll see that I've already detached my router spindle mount from the system. So if you haven't done that, it's a good place to start. In addition to that, we have an M5 eight millimeter screw, single L bracket, three micro limit switch kits, two I've already assembled to show you what the assembly looks like. 
And then I have one broken out here so we can do the assembly together. So these are all the contents that you'll see in your micro limit switch. And that's all part of the assembly. In addition to that, I have my ball driver set here and a flathead screwdriver. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to the micro limit switch and let's go ahead and get that assembled. So first taking the plate with the micro limit switch attached to the PCB. So that's circuit board material if you're unfamiliar with that term. And you'll see that the extension connection system is also attached. So taking our additional plate, just gonna go ahead and place that in a sandwich configuration. And using the M3 self-threading screws, we're gonna go ahead and mount that into place. So once you have that mounted, simply take the nylon spacer, place it in between the plates, and then take the large M5 screw here, go ahead and run that through the nylon spacer, and then add your four millimeter spacer on top of the screw, and thread on your drop-in T-nut. And it's that easy. That completes the assembly of the micro limit switch. Now, if you want to orient this differently, you can always change the side that the screw goes through, and that gives you a different mounting option. But for this build in particular, we're gonna keep it just like this. You can see all three of my limit switches are consistent. So next, let's go ahead and turn our attention to the LED light ring. Now for the LED light ring, we're simply going to flip the router spindle mount upside down and mount the LED light ring using these two outer holes. So we'll use the M5 six millimeter screws. I like to start these by hand and just crank them down with the ball driver at the end. So now that we have that mounted, let's go ahead and mount this router spindle mount back to our Z-axis. So coming back to the Z-axis, you'll see two threaded holes on our double wide gantry plate. So we're simply going to mount that back into place, right back into those holes. Let's go ahead and use the screws that were already attached to the plate. All right, just make, those, just make sure that those are nice and tight. And that looks good. So let's go ahead and turn our attention back to the micro limit switches. So back here at the micro limit switches, we're gonna go ahead and place these according to where we want our plates to max out at. So on the Y axis, I'm going to do something unique actually. I'm gonna go ahead and mount underneath the track here of the bottom of the Y axis. And I'm gonna interact with the V wheel on my gantry card. So let's go ahead and start there first at the front of the Y axis where the jog knob's placed. So here at the bottom, I'm simply gonna go ahead and take the drop in T nut which is right here on the outer end of the micro limit switch. I'm gonna place that into the track. I'm gonna push this down as far as I can go. You can see we have interference with the cast corner. So I'm just gonna place that right against the cast corner here. And you'll feel that drop in Tina grab the track. And once you feel that, just go ahead and secure that into position. And this plunger is gonna interact with this V wheel. So when I home my machine, this table is gonna come out, interact, and then do its homing debounce. So using the jog knob, we'll go ahead and show you a, a representation of what that looks like. So that's exactly what you should see. And now that we have that one in place, let's go ahead and move on to our next micro limit switch. So for our next micro limit switch, we're gonna go ahead and establish a connection to our Z axis. And that's where the single L bracket and eight millimeter screw come into play. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to the Z axis of the mini mill. So here on the Z axis of the mini mill, You'll see a tapped hole right here on the top. We're gonna mount our single L bracket right there, making sure that we use the whole space that's further away from the seam. That way we can position this to where it interacts with our micro limit switch, which is going to mount to our C-beam end mount. So I'm gonna take my eight millimeter screw and mount that into the tapped hole. So now taking the micro limit switch, what we need to do is we need to take off the drop in T-nut and we're gonna switch the orientation of the screw. So I'm just simply switching sides, adding that spacer. And from there, we'll mount it to this hole in the C-beam end mount, and we'll have interaction between the single L bracket and the micro limit switch. So now when the Z-axis comes up, it will interact the micro limit switch, and that's exactly what we want. Okay, so that looks good. Let's go ahead and move to our next micro limit switch. So our last micro limit switch, we're gonna go ahead and establish a connection to our X axis. So that's right on top of the Y for the XY table. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to the X axis. So now what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and rotate my mini mill to the side to give us access to the position where we're gonna mount our X axis micro limit switch. 
So similar to how we mounted the Y-axis micro limit switch, once again, we're going to interact with the wheel. So placing my micro limit switch in this bottom track, I'm going to mount that into position. Okay, so now that we have that micro limit switch in place, I'll show you the interaction between the wheel and the plunger of the micro limit switch. So now that we have that micro limit switch in place, let's go ahead and move on to our extension connectors. So coming back here to our three conductor wire and our two conductor wire, what we need to do is go ahead and connect the wires to our extension connectors. So on each one of the micro limit switches, you'll see a connector attached, which is the male. Let's go ahead and pull those off your micro limit switches. And once you have all three connectors, we're gonna go ahead and connect our three conductor wires to each one of the connectors. So you'll see we have three colors, blue, red, and black. So for each one of these connectors, once again, we're gonna loosen the pins on top. We're gonna to insert blue, red, and black. So we're working our way from right to left with the pins facing up. Now each one of these wires is the same length, so don't concern yourself with that. Go ahead and insert the wires and then tighten down those connectors. Okay, so that's one down. Moving on to the next, let's again loosen and insert your wire from right to left, blue, red, and black. Okay, that one's complete. And the same thing for our last connector. Okay, so now that we have all of our connectors attached, let's simply just attach our connectors back to the micro limit switches. So here at the Y-axis micro limit switch, I'm gonna go ahead and connect, and you'll see the indications on the plate. Signal, those are blue, positives are red, ground is black. So moving over here to the X-axis, once again, let's go ahead and connect. You'll see that our wires do correspond, signal, positive, and ground. And last, we have our Z-axis micro limit switch, and just go ahead and attach that one. So now let's go ahead and move to our LED light ring and connect our two conductor wire. So on the LED light ring, You'll see your green connector here. Simply loosen the pins right here on top and positive is gonna to be to the right, negative to the left. Let's go ahead and connect your two conductor wire and fasten that into place. Okay, and don't concern yourself with the mess. Our next step, we're gonna go ahead and label all of our wires and get everything organized. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're going to go ahead and label all of our wires based on the point of origin. It's a very important step for organization because all these wires are going to be relayed back to our controller board if you're using the black box. We need to make sure that everything's labeled correctly. So you can see I have my wires here laid out. I got some painter's tape and permanent marker. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and start at the top. So the Z-axis is going to be the top. And I'm going to grab that motor wire. So right here, and you can always tell that it's a motor because it's four conductor wire. Micro limit switches will be three, and the LED light ring is two conductor. So I'm taking some painter's tape, and I wrap this around the wire completely. And for the motor, I'm gonna label this ZM for Z motor. Okay, put that one off to the side, and let's move to our next connection. So once again, starting from the top, the Z-axis micro limit switch, three conductor wire. Once again, take some painter's tape. And I'm going to label this one ZL for Z limit. Okay, moving on down. Let's go ahead and turn our attention to the Y axis motor. So this is going to be in the back of the mini mill. And you'll see it here, four conductor wire. And I'll label this one YM for Y motor. Okay, put that one to the side. Next, my X motor. So it's right here on the right side. And I'm going to label this one XM for X motor. Put that one to the side. Next, the X micro limit switch, which is located on the X axis. So this top portion is top actuator of the mini mill. So again, take some painter's tape. And I'm going to label this one XL for X limit. Next, we have our Y axis micro limit switch, which is located here on the front of the Y axis. And I'll label this one YL. Next, we have our LED light ring. So this is two conductor wire located here on the Z axis. And I'm going to label this one LED. 
Okay, so now that completes the labeling of our wires. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and establish a connection here with our Z-axis corrugated tubing. So in this step, we need to go ahead and gather these parts. So what I have here is two flex tubing clamps, two M58 millimeter screws, two drop in T-nuts, a slot cover that comes at 250 millimeters. I've cut this down to 120 millimeters to fit on the Z-axis. So we're gonna run our LED light ring and contain it with the slot cover. And then you have your flexible tubing at one foot. So here at the back of the mini mill, see that I'm facing the back of the mini mill right now. So if you haven't rotated your machine, just go ahead and rotate that around. We're gonna focus on these three wires. So we have a Z-axis motor, we have the Z-axis micro limit switch, and then we have our LED light ring. So the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and install the slot cover to the side of the z-axis and that's where the led light ring is going to run so let's go ahead and turn our attention there first so taking our slot cover and our led light ring wire i'm going to run this in between the slot and then take my slot cover and contain the wire see that that fits nicely and from there just take the wires and we're going to run those to the back and all three of these wires are going to go ahead and be inserted into our flex tubing so taking the flex tubing what I'm gonna do is just take the ends of each one of these wires and I'm gonna run it through the flex tubing. I've just found this to be the easiest way. You can always split the flex tubing down the ends. It's completely up to you. This just works out really well. You just feed it right through. You'll see the wires come out the other end. And I'm just gonna pull that slack. So that's what you should see. All your wires are now contained within the flex tubing. So now, Taking one of the flex tubing clamps, what I'm gonna do is position this at a downward position, just like so. So make sure to leave a little slack here at the top. I'm gonna squeeze down on the flex tubing here. I'm gonna mount this on the second track of the C-beam. So right here where the C-beam end mount is, I'm gonna go in the second track here. So I'm gonna run one of my eight millimeter screws through the flex tubing clamp. Okay, so once you have the eight millimeter screw through, take one of the drop in T-nuts, and thread that on top of the screw. That'll kind of hold everything into place. And then taking your ball driver, just go ahead and mount that into that second track. Okay, so since we have the flex tubing clamp in place here on the top end, we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom end. And we're gonna run that in between the C-beam here on the back end of the mini mill. So let's go ahead and take the flex tubing. Once again, just clamp around and squeeze tightly. And once again, we're going to run that eight millimeter screw through and add our drop in T-nut. Okay, add that drop in T-nut. So once you have your eight millimeter screw and drop in T-nut in place, we're going to mount our flex tubing right here on the side of the C-beam. Okay, so now that we have our flex tubing in place here, everything's assembled. You can see it's really starting to come together here. That's looking really sharp. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and assemble our flex tubing for our Y-axis. So we need to go ahead and gather these parts, our flex tubing clamps times two, two M58 millimeter screws, two drop-in T-nuts, a slot cover at 250 millimeters. I have not cut that down. It fits perfectly on the bottom track here. And this will be used for our micro limit switch wire on our Y-axis. In addition to that, we'll have our ball driver and let's go ahead and get started. Similar to how we did the Z-axis, we're gonna run our wires through the flex tubing first. So we have two wires here that are gonna run through that flex tubing, our X-axis motor and our X-axis micro limit switch. So finding the ends of the wires, once again, I'm just gonna run it through the flex tubing. And once you have all the wires ran through, what I'm gonna do is tilt this system to its side that way I can access underneath the X axis actuator. And that's where we're gonna go ahead and mount one of our flex tubing clamps. So I'm gonna go ahead and tilt this to its side. So from underneath the X axis actuator, we're gonna go ahead and place our flex tubing clamp on the right track of the C-beam. So I'm gonna take my flex tubing clamp, I'm gonna go ahead and place it on top of the flex tubing and just clamping that into place. I'm gonna take one of my eight millimeter screws and run that through. 
and add that drop in T-nut just to keep everything in place. Now from underneath the system, I'm going to go ahead and mount this. So that should be the end result. And what I like to do is just pull from the opposite end of the flex tubing here and just get that micro limit switch slack pulled through. And same for the motor. So now that we have our flex tubing clamp in place here underneath the X axis, we're going to take our micro limit switch wire here and we're going to run that on the bottom track of our C beam on the Y axis. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and feed this to the opposite end of the mini mill. And I'm going to run my slot cover through this front side. I'm going to slide it on down until we reach the back end. Okay, so now that we have our micro limit switch wire in place, let's go ahead and move to the opposite end of our flex tubing, which is going to mount on the back of our system. So facing the back of the mini mill, we're going to take our flex tubing clamp and we're just going to place this on top of the flex tubing. And what we're looking for is an upright position for these two ends that are going to mount to the C-beam. So right here, and we're going to keep that position towards the bottom. That way we can fit our black box right here. And it's really easy for wire management. All these wires are going to run underneath and are going to be hidden by the black box. So what we're going to do is just take our eight millimeter screw, run it through our flex tubing clamp, add that drop in T-nut. And then we're going to run that into this track of the C-beam. What I like to do is just start it up top here and we're going to find a, a good position for this flex tubing clamp. So once we get that locked in, we're going to do is use that position to maneuver the flex tubing clamp upright. And then we're going to bring that down as far as we can to the C-beam end mount. That way we have enough space here to mount our controller board. So I'm going to bring this back down and then I'm going to tighten it into place. And that should be the end result. Okay, so now that we have our Y-axis flex tubing in place, Everything's looking nice and organized. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and establish connections to our controller as well as our power supply. So what I have here is my black box motion control system, my power supply unit. They've all been assembled with the cases. So you have your PCB cases for the black box as well as the power supply. And I'll insert a card at the top right of the video. So follow along with those videos are really quick assemblies. And at that point, we can go ahead and get started. So in addition to that, some other components that are included with the power supply kit, you have your power wire, which provides power to your controller board. And then you have your power cord for the power supply. So in addition to that, we have our tooling. All we'll need is our ball driver and flathead screwdriver. And let's go ahead and get started. So part of the assembly of the black box, you'll see that you have all of your connectors that you take off of the muscle and brains boards. So that's what I have here. I have three four conductor extension connectors and three three conductor extension connectors. So those all came with the black box motion control system. So I'm just gonna utilize those for the connection of our wires. So we have three motors and three micro limit switches and the LED light ring, I'll show you what we're gonna do with that. And we're actually going to attach that to the power cable. So we're gonna actually run those wires in with our power cable. And whenever you turn on your black box, your LED light ring will have power as well. So we'll get to that later on. So let's go ahead and move into establishing a connection here with our wires to our connectors. So we're going to take our four pin connectors and we're going to loosen all the pins on the top. And once you have those pins loosened, you should see the metal inserts at the bottom of the connector. That's exactly what we want. And let's go ahead and find one of our motor wires. I'm going to start here with the Y axis motor since we're facing the back of the machine. And once again, we labeled all of these wires. So for our convenience, we know exactly what we're dealing with. So this is my Y motor, and I'm going to connect this, as I show here, working right to left, red, blue, green, and yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert those wires now and tighten down those pin connectors. Okay, give those a tug, make sure that those wires are fully inserted. That looks good. Let's go ahead and move on to our next motor. So right here, I have my X motor. I'm gonna go ahead and connect that. Once again, following the same process, loosen the pins. Insert those wires once again, red, blue, green, and yellow, right to left, the pins facing up, and tighten down those connectors. Okay, give those a tug. That's a solid connection, so we'll move this one to the side. So next, we're going to go ahead and grab our Z-axis motor, grabbing another four-pin connector. We're going to loosen those pins. And once again, 
working our way from right to left of the pins facing up, red, blue, green, and yellow. Okay, so now that we have that connected, once again, just give those a tug, and that's a solid connection. So we'll move that one to the side, and we're gonna go ahead and move on to our micro limit switches. So just grabbing one here off the top, I have my X limit. I'm gonna go ahead and take one of my three pin connectors. And once again, we're gonna go ahead and work our way from right to left, blue, red, black. And that's with the pins facing upright and tighten down those connectors. Give those a tug. Make sure that those wires are fully inserted. And let's grab our next wire. So this is our Z limit. Once again, right to left, blue, red, black. Give those a tug, that looks good. Let's move on to our last micro limit switch and the same exact way we did the others. All right, give that one a tug as well and that looks good. So let's go ahead and move forward. So next I'm gonna go ahead and take my power cable that came with the power supply and I'm just gonna locate one end. It doesn't matter which end, they're both the same connectors. So I'm just gonna locate one end and I'm gonna loosen each one of these pins on top and prep it for the insertion of the LED light ring wire. So here on the power supply, you're gonna have white, which is our positive, black, and that's gonna be the ground. So with the LED light ring, red is positive, black is ground. So what I'm gonna do is just twist these wires together. So that's my positive, and the same for the negative. And coming back to the two pin connector, positive on the right, negative on the left. Insert those wires and tighten down those pins. Make sure those are nice and tight. You don't want this connection coming loose. Okay, so now that we have all of our wires prepped and ready to go, basically all we have to do now is just plug into the black box, which is super convenient and easy. You gotta love this system. It's definitely simplified all the electronics in any type of machine. So. What we need to do now is just go ahead and set up our mounting hardware specific to the way that we're going to mount this black box. So these outer holes here work perfect with a 2080 profile. So the 80 millimeter profile is what we're looking for on the C-beam. So this is on the back of the mini mill. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just insert our hardware. So I'm going to put one on this right side. So that's the M5 six millimeter screw. I'm going to tie on my drop antenna and then on the opposite side, this left corner, I'm gonna insert my other M5 six millimeter screw. So let's go ahead and insert those screws now. Tie on that drop anti nut, come around to the other side. And that's what you should see. So I use this cross configuration based on stabilizing this controller to the back of the mini mill. So you could always use additional screws and mount it on each side if you want. It's not necessary. This is a sturdy hold and a foundation for this controller board. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to the back of the mini mill. Now over here at the back of the mini mill, I'm gonna go ahead and slide in my drop in T-nuts. So each one should just drop into the track and then we're gonna fasten those into place. And what I like to do is bring this up slightly. That way we can get our power connectors here in the bottom as well as our USB cable. And then on the top end, I'm also gonna fasten this into place but this can always be adjusted. All you have to do is loosen the screws and drop it back down, which is exactly what I'm gonna do after I have my power connector connected to the controller, as well as the USB cable. Okay, so now that we're facing the top of the black box here, we're gonna go ahead and start connecting our motors. So starting here with my Z motor, I'm gonna go ahead and locate Z motor and just plug it in. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and find my Y motor. And with the Y motor, what I like to do is run underneath the black box through this port here, which is the C-beam channel, and then connect it. That way our wires stay nice and organized and you don't have a lot of excess just floating around. So as you can see, I brought it right through. And I'm gonna pull that slack, just like so, and I'm gonna go ahead and connect my Y motor. So next I'm gonna go ahead and take my X motor, same thing, we're gonna run it through and establish that connection to our controller. Okay, so moving on to the micro limit switches. What I have here is my Z limit. I'm gonna go ahead and connect that where it says Z limit. Moving forward, I have my X limit. Once again, since this is on the bottom half of the black box, I'm gonna go ahead and run that through the channel. 
And what I'm doing here is I'm going underneath these wires that are tied into the flex tubing for the Z-axis. That way I don't unplug these when we do the wire management. Let's try to keep everything nice and organized. So I'm going to plug this in where it says X limit. And last we have our Y limit. Once again, we're going to run that through the channel and plug that one in. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in the X limit. All right, so now we have all of our limit switches and motors plugged into the designated locations. So everything looks good there. So what I'm going to do now is try to organize some of this wire that's hanging loose on top. What I like to do is just tuck this back behind the black box into the C channel, the C beam. Okay, and one thing just to really keep in mind is you do not want to loosen these connectors. So just make sure to press down on each one, making sure that all the connectors are still connected to your controller. And that is looking sharp. All of our wire is tucked behind the black box, barely visible. It's really starting to come together. Okay, so coming over here to the power supply unit, I'm going to take the other end of our power cable and plug it into either one of these outputs. I'm just going to choose the one on the right. Then I'm going to take my power cable here. Just go ahead and prep that. We're not powering anything on yet. We're just going to go ahead and prep the power supply. Go ahead and plug that in. So the only other thing that you need to pay attention to when building this power supply is your switch here on the right side needs to be set at a 115 volt. So all you have to do is just grab a flathead and flip that if you're on the 230 volt. So if you're in the States, you're going to switch to that 115. Otherwise, your power supply will not power on. Okay, so now that we have our power supply prepped and ready, let's go ahead and turn our attention back to the black box because we need to go ahead and plug in our power supply cord. So let's go ahead and turn our attention there. So what I've done here is I've just turned a mini mill on its side. That way I can show you the power supply unit. It's going to go right here on the bottom of the black box. So taking that connector, I'm just going to go ahead and place that just like so and make sure that that connection is completely into the controller board. Okay, in addition to that, you'll see your serial port here for your USB cable. So that's just on the left side of the black box and we'll get to that on a later step. So let's go ahead and continue on with our wire organization. So here at the bottom of the black box, you'll see additional length of wire kind of hanging loose. What we're gonna do is just like we did on the top, we're gonna to tuck that in between the C channel and the black box. The only one that I'm not tucking, of course, is my power supply. I want that wire to be able to exit out and connect to my power supply unit. All right, that's looking sharp. So we have our wires tucked behind the black box now. The management of these wires is looking exceptional. So what we need to do is just go ahead and zip tie a couple different components and we'll do that on our next step. So let's go ahead and move to the next step. So on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and tidy up some of our wires and connectors. What we're gonna use is our zip ties. So with the kit, you receive 10 zip ties. So we're gonna go ahead and take these zip ties and just zip tie certain areas that just need that extra strength. So let's go ahead and gather our 10 zip ties and I have some snips here. Scissors will work just fine. And that's just to clip off the excess. So first we're gonna start off with the connector that's attached to our Y axis motor. So taking one of my zip ties here, what I'm gonna do is loop this through the connector in between the wires and that's going to keep this connector fastened so you don't have to worry about it being unplugged. Uh, so what I did there is ran through the two sets of wires on top and the two sets of wire underneath. From there I'm going to go ahead and zip tie this. All right once you have it zip tied we're going to go ahead and snip off the excess just like so and once again I'm just going to keep those wires tucked underneath I'm going to take one more zip tie and I'm going to zip tie this connector to that 40 millimeter spacer here attached to the motor. Okay, once again, we're going to snip off the excess. All right, so now that we have that connector zip tied, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So up at the top here, we have our Z axis motor. We're going to do the same thing we did with the Y and we're going to run the zip tie through the wires and keeping that connector into place. You see it just disconnected. So I'm just going to use that to my benefit, reconnect and zip tie that together. All right, once you have that connected, let's go ahead and snip off the excess. And next, I'm gonna go ahead and take a zip tie, and I'm gonna zip tie all three of these wires together. So that's the motor wire, LED, and micro limit. Okay, so now that we have the Z axis complete, let's go ahead and move on to the X axis. So here on the X axis motor, we also have a connector. We're gonna take our zip tie and do the same exact thing we did for the Y and the Z. Okay, so now that we have that connector zip tied, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. 
So on this next step, we're going to go ahead and connect our USB cable to our black box motion control system. And we're also going to just go ahead and connect that to our laptop and start the software portion of this video. So all I'm going to do is just unravel my USB cable here. Taking the serial port connection, I'm going to connect that into the bottom end of the black box. And once you have that connected, go ahead and bring that over to your device that you're going to be controlling your machine with. And what I'm going to do here is zip tie both the power cable and my USB cable. And then I'm going to zip tie that to this 40 mil spacer. So go ahead and grab a couple of your spare zip ties. I'm going to go ahead and zip tie the cables first. And I'm going to come down here and zip tie that 40 mil spacer. Okay, once you have those wires zip tied together, let's go ahead and plug in our USB cable to the laptop. And once you have it connected, let's go ahead and move on to the software portion. So on the software portion of this video, we're going to go ahead and open up our browser first. Because what we need to do is go ahead and download our OpenBuilds control machine driver. So let's go to openbuilds.com. Up at the top, you'll see a software tab. Go ahead and select that. And we're going to download the OpenBuilds control machine driver. So once you select that, you'll see options here for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'm using a Windows computer, so I'm going to go ahead and download the executable. And just save that to a location. I'm going to save it to my desktop. And it'll download here on the left bottom corner. Once it's complete, select it. And you'll be given a prompt that says Windows protected your PC. We're going to select more info and run anyway. I'm just going to go through some prompts. Just run through those. Okay, and finish. And you'll see that the control has started. Go ahead and select it. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and establish connection to our black box. So up at the top left corner, you'll see comp positions. We need to select the comp that is attached to our controller board. So here for me, it's gonna be the second option. It might be different for you. So this is comp 33. Once you've found the connection that you need, go ahead and connect. And the first thing you'll see is your alarm state. So all you have to do is hit unlock alarm if you were to want to operate the machine. But since we don't have power provided to our controller board right now, we're just going to upload Gerbil settings and make sure that everything is updated to our controller board before we even power on the machine. And this is the safest way to do any type of machine calibration. You always want to set up your settings into your controller board before you start moving the machine. So the unlock alarm state can either stay on or you can go ahead and select it to turn it off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. That way I don't have to worry about the notification. So up at the top here, you'll see options for control, Gerbil settings, and troubleshooting. We are going to select Gerbil settings. And what's really cool about the software is it is super easy to install your Gerbil settings to your controller board. So what we have here is low default settings. So based on the machine type that you have from OpenBuilds, you can select any type of machine profile. So we have the different configurations for the Acro. We have the CB machine, extra large, lead machine, the mini mill, Sphinx, WorkBee. Everything is in here. So if you purchased a machine from OpenBuilds, all these calculations have already been done for you. So all you need to do is select the machine that you have. It's that easy. So we're gonna go ahead and select OpenBuilds mini mill since that's the machine we're using for this video. Once you select the mini mill, you'll see that you have limit switches installed. So if you don't have limit switches installed, all you have to do is hit this pin here and it will deselect the limit switches. But with this kit, limit switches are included. So we're gonna leave that installed. So up at the top left corner, you'll see the save to firmware option. So you're gonna go ahead and select that. And from there, it's going to reset your Gerbil configuration. So it's gonna restart the controller and go ahead and select yes. You get a please wait and also the alarm state will kick back in, which is precautionary. Like I said, if you have power provided to the machine, this alarm state really comes in handy just in case you're not familiar with where the machine's going to move once you go into the control tab. So once again, I'm gonna go ahead and hit unlock alarm, but it's that easy. So all of our default values are inputted into the system. So you can scroll through there and see each one individually. These are advanced settings. So since the default is pre-calculated for your convenience, I would stick with those settings for now, but you can come back in and calibrate your machine if you want. You can also change some of these settings based on your preference, which is super nice. And it's extremely easy as well. 
things have been laid out so you can select which axis you want to invert for a homing direction invert you can also go down here for the fine tune wizard which is extremely helpful for calibrating your machine so we have these values pre-calculated which are very accurate but if you want to fine tune your machine just based on its profile specifically this is where you'll do it. So you'll select the fine tune wizard and there's an explanation here of how to do it. And from there, you'll run through each axis and calibrate your machine. That's very helpful and definitely a useful tool here in the software. So along with that, you have your maximum travels, your accelerations. And like I said, these are advanced settings for a reason. So if you're a new user, I wouldn't look into this too much. Just kind of familiarize yourself with the machine and how the software works. And from there, you can come back here and start modifying if you want. Okay, so now that we have the default settings established here to our controller board, we're going to go ahead and go back to the control tab. And we're going to go ahead and jog the machine around. So what we need to do is power on our power supply and our black box motion control system. So once you power on your device, the first thing you should hear is your motors engaged. So all these are signs as well as the LED light ring being powered on here, providing light. All these are signs that you do have your system turned on. So now that we have the machine turned on, what we're gonna do is go ahead and jog the machine around a little bit, make sure that all of our values are correct, and just make sure that the machine mechanically is sound. So let's go ahead and move the x-axis around first. So there's a couple things too that I would like to describe before we go ahead and jog the machine. Now, if you have a preference for Keyboard shortcuts, this is a new addition to the control software that is absolutely amazing. I love it. It's really cool and convenient to be able to move your machine by hotkeys. So what I mean by hotkeys is exactly that. You got your keyboard shortcuts. So you have continuous jogging mode. You can customize your keyboard shortcuts here. So the defaults here are for arrow keys, which I like. So I'm gonna leave it all the same and your z-axis you have page down page up which is really nice so if you wanted to modify those keys based on your preference you could definitely do that and like i said it's just a really nice addition so what i'm going to do is just go ahead and deselect the uh, continuous jog that way we can look at our increments here at the bottom and just test the machine before we go into a continuous jogging mode just in case there were some issues where the machine's values are incorrect so going to a one millimeter increment I'm gonna go ahead and move my x-axis around. So a positive movement should be moving to the left. So you'll see my gantry cart move to the left if I hit a positive movement, and that's what we're looking for. So as you can see, that is correct. My gantry cart is moving in the right direction, so I can move that up to 10 millimeter increments. And it sounds great. So everything looks good there. If I hit a negative movement, it's gonna go back in the opposite direction. So everything looks good there. So let's try the Y axis. The Y axis specifically for this machine, since it's not a Cartesian style and it's a three axis machine, what we're looking for is movement to the front of the machine. So if you can imagine your router being the thing that's moving, then that makes a little bit more sense. Like for me, like I, I like the Cartesian style machine. so. To know that the gantry is moving to the right or back into the field, I always see it as positive movements. So for me, this kind of seems backwards, but it's not. So if you visualize that the router is the thing that's moving, it makes perfect sense. So if I jog this to a positive movement and it moves to the left, and I visualize my router going to the right of the material, that makes perfect sense. Also, when you have a positive movement moving back to the front of the machine, and you visualize your router moving back into the material, like I said, it makes perfect sense. So it's just a, you know, a tip that helps me when it comes to the positive and negatives for this machine specifically. So, you know, obviously you'll get used to it as you go, but a positive movement here for the Y axis should move to the front of the machine. So as you can see, positive movement does move to the front. That looks good. Negative movement moves back and the machine sounds excellent. This is really exciting. The mini mill's up and running. The black box motion control system sounds awesome with these motors. You can tell there's definitely some power provided to the system. So now we'll go back down to one millimeter increments and we're gonna test the Z axis. 
I always set the one millimeter increments for the Z-axis because you have less travel than the majority of the system. So let's go ahead and make a negative movement for the Z-axis that should move down towards the material. And you can see that it does move down. So I'll bump that back up to 10 millimeters. And man, it sounds great. So positive movement obviously is moving back up and everything looks good. Our machine is in great working order. So now what we need to do is go into the troubleshooting tab here and we're gonna go ahead and test out our micro limits. So before we run a homing cycle, which is up top here, we need to make sure that each limit is sending a signal to our controller board. Now the way you do that is you go to the troubleshooting tab and here you'll see inputs and end stops and you have X limit, Y limit, Z limit, probe, door sensor, custom buttons. So since we just have X, Y, and Z limits, we're gonna go ahead and test those. So all you have to do is select one of the micro limit switch plungers, just like so, and you'll see that we have a hard limit triggered. So what a hard limit is, is any type of movement that interacts with the micro limit switch will stop the machine. So if you're at 100 millimeter increments and you're moving your Z-axis positive, that's gonna hit the micro limit switch and it's gonna stop it before your machine grinds on the top. So it's just very useful to have those hard limits. Also, you can set up more micro limit switches based on your machine parameters. It's completely up to you, but this is just specifically for our homing cycle. So let's go ahead and cancel this. I'm gonna leave my alarm state open. That way we can see the switches turn on and off. So let's look at the Z limit. You'll see that that turns on. When I release, it turns off. We have our Y limit turns on, looks good. And then we have our X limit. And that turns on as well, that looks great. So everything's working properly. Let's go to the unlock alarm. So we selected that, we're going back to the controller panel. And from there, we're gonna go ahead and engage the homing cycle. So go ahead and press home all. And if you have any issues, you have a stop job option here, which will immediately stop the machine, or you can just turn the machine off. So you can do that with the black box or the power supply, that's up to you. So now let's go ahead and execute the homing cycle. So it starts with the Z axis, it interacts with the micro limit switch, does a homing debounce, re-engages the micro limit switch and repositions. So now it's gonna to go to the X and Y simultaneously. It's found the X, now it's going to the Y. Once again, the homing debounce will engage it interacts with the micro limit switch and comes back to its position. So now the machine knows that it's home. So another thing that we could look at here in the troubleshooting tab is you have your Gerbil flashing tool, which is very useful. You can actually go through here and select your controller type and you can flash the newest versions of Gerbil. So this is really convenient to have a built-in flashing tool in the actual control software. Absolutely love it. You also have the change log here so you can always monitor new updates for the control software, which is extremely helpful because this is constantly being developed by the Open Builds engineers. So new, new additions are pretty much added on the daily from what I can see. And it's really nice to just be informed of those changes. Another thing to really look into is the Open Builds Forum. Now this is great for a community of builders that are working together to share information as well as share you know possible questions and innovations that might you know, benefit the control software. So this is where you will do that. You'll select that and it'll take you to the forum. And from there you can give suggestions or if you have questions on how things work, you can always go there to ask questions. So now going back to the control tab, I'm gonna go over some of these features that are really cool in the software. You have your tooling option up here. So if you have a laser tool, you can always select that, what percentage you wanna to provide to the laser. You also have the plasma, coolant, spindle. So you basically you can turn on any tooling with this switch. And that's if you have an IoT relay and it's all wired up to your controller. Also, the tool off tool is very important. So if you have a tool engaged, make sure that you turn it off here. Along with that, we have the jog widget, which is very useful. So you can select this, scan the QR code and jog the machine around with your phone. This is extremely helpful, especially if you don't want your laptop right next to your machine. You just wanna do this wirelessly. So this is a great way to do that. So all you have to do, like I said, is scan that QR code 
and you're good to go. And then the keyboard shortcuts, like I was saying earlier, this is a new addition, which is awesome. Absolutely love it. You got the continuous jogging mode I just selected. Now, based on my arrow keys, I can just move this around with my controls. So you can press the button once to get small increment movements, or you can hold it for that continuous jog. Once you release, it stops. So we have the same thing for the Y, the Z axis. I mean, this is really cool. It's like a video game. I love it. <laughs> all right, so now that we have all of these tools described, Another couple of things I would like to show you is the 3D viewer, which is extremely nice. And once you have your settings uploaded to your controller, you'll see that the machine type that you're using is in the right corner. So you always know which machine profile you have set up in your settings. So this is really cool. As well as the 3D viewer, you can manipulate. You can check it in real time. You have a progress bar here at the bottom, which will give you a time estimate of when the job will be completed. Absolutely love it. So. We have serial console as well, so you can see the actual commands that are given as well as your settings. So you also have macros here, so you can always add those additional points of reference for your machine. You also have the G-code editor here, which you can write in custom G-code, or if you have a particular software that you're using that has G-code that does not comply with the control, you can always just delete it and run the G-code once you have those specific commands taking out. One example would be Aspire. It leaves a tap at the top. So if you were to use Aspire, you can always just select that, delete it and run the G code and it works great. So just something to keep in mind there. So another thing that we're gonna go over, once we get into the actual cam software and we run some G code on this machine, oh yes, we're gonna run some G code. So what we're gonna do is set up our zero point, which that's gonna be done here in the digital readouts. So you have a go to zero option once you set your zero point, but these are all your DROs. So like I said before, that's digital readout. So something to keep in mind there as well. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and set up a job. So at the top right corner of the control software, you'll see openbuilds.com, which is a shortcut to get to the CAM software. So we're gonna go ahead and select that and you'll see here that we have the build list that's provided on the form. We're gonna select software once again up top here, and we're going to go into the Open Builds Cam G Code Generator. So go ahead and select it, and you will see that you're going to start with the new workspace on the Cam G Code Generator. Now, similar to the control software, you can manipulate your workspace based on the parameters. You can see that I have the mini mill already selected, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I did that. You go into settings here at the top. From there, you'll select settings, and you have options here which are also default settings, very convenient to select your controller board that you're using right here. I'm using the open builds black box. So we're going to select that. And then we have the open builds mini mill. If you have a different machine profile, you can always select that and follow along. It's pretty much exactly the same, very easy to use. So we're using the open builds mini mill. We're going to save that. And that basically uploads the custom parameters for that machine. So you can see that I have the profile set here for the mini mill, which is really awesome. And we're going to go into the workspace. So what we're going to do is open up a hello world example and do an air cut just to make sure that everything's functioning correctly on the machine. So go to open hello world example and we're going to open the CNC hello world. And once the hello world opens up, you'll see that the G code has been generated, which is all these little lines here. So once again, like I said, you can really zoom in here and see all the different tool paths, your cut depth. As you can see, this is just very intuitive, very easy to use. You also have tools here if you want to modify this existing G code. And also on the right side here, you're going to see your vectors for path inside. You have your CNC pocket, which is in the middle. And then you have your path outside, which is the bottom here. And another cool tool here on the CAM software is the simulation tool. So you can run that and see how the G code works. And this is specific to the machine and how it's going to operate. You can do the same thing on the control software, which is cool. But we're going to stop that simulation and go ahead and transfer this G code to our open builds control. So go ahead and select this option here at the bottom. And it's going to upload in the 3D viewer of your control software. So once again, you're going to see the G code populated here. You can zoom in. That's just really nice. Really love this feature of the software. 
And once again, like I said, you can simulate this job, change the speed, reset your view. Okay, so now that we have our project put into the control software, what we need to do is establish a zero point. So no matter what kind of project you're working on, you always start with your zero point. So you can either call that your zero point, your project start point. It's just basically telling the machine, hey, we're starting here, no matter what job I'm working on. And from there, the machine understands, hey, this is the starting point. This is the room I have to work with. And it's just always a good thing to start with a, a zero point, even when you're checking the size, because there's a check size option here, which is extremely useful. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and set up our machine as if we had a router inside the router spindle mount. So I'm making negative movements right now to bring my material back. And with this machine, you always start with the front left corner, and this is your zero point. So like I said, positives coming out here. So if you can envision your router moving back, that's why we start here at that top left position. So we're bringing the gantry back. And we're gonna find that zero point. And be careful not to hit that micro limit switch because that will trigger your hard limits. And from here, we have the Z axis at a good position, but if you have it all the way at the top, let's say you're up here, and I'm using the continuous jog for this, which is really nice. So I can bring it up here to the micro limit switch, right? But since this is an actual G code that you can use and cut out of material, it's going to delve down and back up based on the G code, right? So we're gonna go ahead and bring that down slightly just so we don't hit that hard limit. So that actually looks good. I'm in a good position here for a starting point. You can actually move that Y back a little bit more. And now we're within the parameters of the machine. So a really cool feature here is check size. The check size feature is extremely helpful for knowing where this project is gonna lay on your material. So, so since we don't have a zero point established yet, I'm gonna go ahead and set that zero for X, Y, and Z. And you'll see that the DROs zero out. That's exactly what you should see. So now the zero point has been established. So if I want to check the size of this project, I just go ahead and select check size. And it's going to show me the parameters of the job. So now that we've checked the size, we see that the material is going to be perfect for this job. What we need to do is just go back to our zero point. So if you go to zero, it's going to take you right back to that zero point that we established originally. So that's just a really useful tool. Like I said, just make sure to zero out your machine before you hit the check size tool because it's all based on your zero point. If you don't have a zero point established, the machine's just going to go in a direction that you don't even know. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and start this job. We have our zero point established. Everything looks good on the machine. So we're ready for this air cut. Now, one thing to keep in mind whenever you're working with this machine or you're running G-code on the machine is just be aware of your stop job option. So if your machine is doing something that it's not supposed to, you want to stop the job in the software. And also, you can just shut down your machine. So you can always just hit the power button here on your black box, and that's going to stop the machine. So it's just better to be safe than sorry here. Also, you can shut down your power supply. It's just really important to stay safe when working with these machines. Now, if you're cutting out material, obviously wear your PPE, it's your personal protective equipment, you know, eyeglasses, eyewear, you know, whatever the case might be, depending on the material that you're cutting, safety first. So let's go ahead and run the job. We've got our zero point set up. We're ready to go ahead and run this job. So here I'm watching it on the 3D view. It's in real time. I'm just watching my machine work, which is really nice. And let's watch our machine work. Okay, so that looks good. I've ran some of the G code. The machine seems to be operating fine. So that actually looks really good. So what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and stop the job. As you can see, it's immediate while it's triggering your alarm. So we're gonna clear the alarm here. I'm gonna go ahead and do a homing cycle just to get everything set up the way that we like right at the front of the machine. And if you want to continue running that G-code, it's completely up to you. But for the sake of the video, I'm just going to go ahead and home my machine now. And as you can see, everything looks great. This machine is operating perfectly. So that concludes the software portion of this video. Okay, so that concludes the wiring and software of the mini mill. And as you can see, this machine is beautiful. All the wiring came out nice and neat. 
It's aesthetically pleasing. The black box is a powerhouse like we knew it would be. This machine is running smooth. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and make sure to join the Open Builds community.